I got a word today for somebody, and, and I pray to encourage you now. I'm going to give you the title of my message. My wife laughed when I told her it. She's like, that's kind of funny, babe. I said, I know, but the truth is God gave me this word, and I preached it over at, for our friends, and I, I you know, um, built it up for this morning, different, you know, different things for our particular church, but God gave me this word to share, and the title of my message I'm right now is entitled, Stepping Into What You're Made For. Now, my wife laughed because she's like, you can't even like step right now. I said, I know, I know, but that's the hilarious part because sometimes you got to step into what God has called. Sometimes you're going to go running to it. Sometimes you're going to hobble your way to it. Sometimes you're going to crawl your way to it. Sometimes they're going to carry you into it. But my God, we're going to step into what God called us and made us to do. Shout amen. So I want you to grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, because, you know, and then on top of that, we got to raise an extra million dollars. Just a little bit. Anybody got an extra million laying around? Praise God. Holla at your boy. You know what I mean? And I'm like, praise God, you know? So don't worry. My ankle's taped up. I feel like I'm in the game right now. We're taped up, spatted up. We're ready to go, you know? And uh, we're going to lay it all on the field. Let's go, somebody, right? We're going to lay it all on the field. But... Thank you for being in faith with us because, yes, things are coming every direction, but I know there's nothing that can stop what God wants to do when His people come together and we're going to do this. How many believe we're going to raise that extra million? Come on. How many believe we're going to do it? Okay. I need, you to, I need you to shout a little louder. How many believe we're going to raise that extra million? That's right. Okay. Come on, Irvine. Come on, online. And so let's respond in faith and let's get this thing done. Let's just, let's, let's, let's give sacrificially. I know God's going to do a miracle, but I want to talk today and uh, I'm going to permit me. I'm going to sit. Okay. Uh, you know, I know I love standing for the word and let me just kind of, you're like, what are you doing? I'm revving the engine. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> the blood just flows. You know what I mean? Um, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 35. And we're going to read here a particular text in the Bible where Peter's going to walk on water, but I want to look at how he got to that part. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, it says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. Tell someone next to you, Jesus made him get in the boat. Just say, it. I love this text because some things God will ask you to do and other things God will make you do. <laughs> like he's going he's gonna to make you do it because it needs to get done in your life. He made them get in. Say, tell your neighbor, he's going to make you do it. Says that, he's going to make you do it. Now, you don't like that type of preaching. Nobody tells me what to do. That's your problem. That's your problem. That's your problem. Come on. So, made him get in. Now, let's kind of, he said he made him get in the boat. And he says to go ahead of him to where? To the other side. He's like, go to the other side, okay? God was like, we got, we got places to go. I didn't even know Pastor Ben was going to preach this last week, which just thank God for Pastor Ben. How many love Pastor Ben? He's such a man of God. I love him. But he, we both preaching the same word, so God was downloading it to us. But to the other side, it says, while he dismissed the crowd, it says, and after he had dismissed them, he went up to the mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone. Just a side note, if Jesus prayed, how many know we're going to need to pray? Okay, so, like, I don't need to pray. Well, Jesus prayed. And if you're, unless you're stronger than Jesus, come on now, right? He prayed. Let's continue here. Verse 24, it says, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land buffeted by the waves because of the wind that was against it. It says, shortly, be um, shortly before dawn, Jesus went to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and they said, it's a ghost. It's la Llorona. <laughs> you know, like, it's a ghost. They said, and they cried. I think that's hilarious because I find it interesting, like, as soon as, like, the storms and, and you know, trials start hitting, they totally abandon their faith and they're like it's a ghost and I, that's kind of the picture of what happens to some believers that as soon as times get tough we abandon our faith and start going to all kinds of other stuff you know well I got this crystal I don't need no crystal I need the cross you know well you know the feng shui and the and the, the what are we talking about feng nothing come on you need Jesus you know what I'm saying and so it's like they're like it's a ghost like you don't know you know the bloody Mary like no listen Come on, somebody. Don't lose your, tell your neighbor, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Okay? So they're like, no, it's not. Just like, chill out. Don't trip. Apple chip in his eye. Don't be afraid. Verse 28. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Notice Peter said, I want to go do what you're doing on the water. He says, 29, come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat 
and the Bible says, what did he do? He walked on the water. It says, and he came toward Jesus, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And what happened? He began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. And he said, you have little faith. He said, why did you doubt? And when, notice it said little faith. They're like, little faith? I mean, it was walking on water. If walking on water is little faith, we all gonna need to get saved after this service all the time. But I'll break it down here in a second, what it actually meant. It's a little faith. You doubt. Verse 32, he says, and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat worshiped him. What did they do? They, because it's always about worship and saying, truly, you are the son of God. I want to talk today, tell my messages, step into what you're made for. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We came here this morning, God, not to hear the word of man, but to hear the word of the Lord. Father, I pray that you would move in this service, God. And my prayer this morning, God, is that, yeah, thank you, Lord. This is no theatrics. This is about us rising up to be what you called us to be. This is about us making a physical step for a spiritual implication that nothing is going to stop us doing what you called us to do. And God, my prayer is for somebody within the sound of my voice that is in this room in Irvine online that will be out at this meal service, that God, you would speak to them. That God, no matter what comes against them, they are still anointed to walk on water. That we will do the impossible. That we will see full restoration. That we will get to where you're calling us to be. Father, let us do the impossible to see the miraculous, to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. All the God's people say amen. Give God a hand clap. Tell three people, come on, tell three people you're going to walk on water, and then you may be seated. Come on, tell them that. Say you may walk on water. You're going to walk on water. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. And then tell somebody else, say, step into what you're made for. Tell them that. Step into what you're made for in Jesus' name. You know, I'm coming to realize at this, this place that we're in, you know, I'm in a battle. I'm in a fight. Anybody else in a fight? Come on now. That's right. That's right. Yes, we are. And I'm realizing that when we're in these type of battles that trials don't build you. How you go through trials builds you. I'll say it one more time. Trials don't build you. How you go through trials build you. Because two people can go through the same situation. One will come out with better faith. The other one will come out bitter. So it's not what you go through, it's how you go through it. And I'm really having to check myself. So if not anything, if your life is all awesome and wherever you walk, roses grow, pray for your pastor right now, okay? Pray for your boy because right now we, we in a fight. And I'm realizing that I have to check myself how I'm going through it. Because if I just go through it, then I won't grow through it. So it's not what I go through, it's how I go through it. Tell your neighbor, how you going? How you going? How you going through it? Say, how you going through it? How you going through it, right? And I have to, like, let's just be real, okay? Like, let's be real. When, this stuff, when, when stuff like this happened, like, man, I was so frustrated this last week. Oh, you don't get frustrated? Why are you looking at me like that? I was, and I was like, I can't even get the water. Come here, water bottle. <laughs> like, I'm so frustrated, you know? Like, I'm like, I can't go to the gym, and I can't, not, no, I'm, I'm like, I feel I just be like, Bleh, you know? And, and I'm like going through physical therapy, and all this stuff. I'm like, ain't nobody got time for rolled ankles right now. I got things to do, you know? And, I, and I'm just like, I got to check myself. Hold on, Lord. Hold on, Lord. Hold on, hold on. Because you're going to start getting the flesh. Nobody gets in the flesh. <laughs> Talk to me, honest people. You start getting, but you got to be like, no, no, Lord, Lord, hold on, Lord. There's something you're trying to speak through me through this. You are trying to grow and develop me into a, 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 a version that's going to be needed of Josiah for this next season. And, I, and, I, and I'm telling somebody today, that's why I felt I had to be here. Like I said, I just said, I got I to gotta get there. I don't care if they have to carry me there. I got to be on crutches there. If I got to crawl there. I don't care if I'm there. I was like, I got to just tell somebody who's coming to church today that what you're going through is going to develop you and build you into the person God has called you and me to be for where he's taking our families. Shout amen. Where he's taking our families. 
And yes, we're building God's kingdom. And yes, I know that we're in a season of expansion for us as a, fa- a church family. And we're, you know, making, I believe, history for Southern California to turn a former Walmart into the house of God that hasn't been done in my lifetime, at least seen here in Orange County. And we're, we're, about, to, we're about to disrupt the darkness. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Amen. And we're going to see God be saved. And, and us who are people of faith, we should be excited about that. Like, thank God that, that, that he's, he's going to bring, he's moving, amen? And, and so in that, those times, it just, it says, okay, God, then all of this, Lord, we're gonna, I'm, I'm, you're going to develop me into that. And Lord, I, I want to see your hand move in my life and, and how we do that. And one thing I want to tell you as well, because I'm just, this is, where, this is where we're at, okay? And if this doesn't, doesn't apply to you, well, then just like I said, God bless you. You might need this one day. But, but one thing I'm realizing is, is that the fight is never about who you are today. It's always about who you're becoming. Okay? It's not about where you're at now. Like the, the, the battles, the, the fights, the, the, the attacks on your children. Because some of us, you know, you're like, it's not the attack I'm going through, but the attack I see on my kids or the attack I see on my spouse or the attack you see on your family. And, and, and I want to tell you is that attack is never about where you're at today. It's always about where you're going, who you're becoming, what God is developing in you. And so, yeah, 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 you can clap right there to God be the glory. It's about, it's about where we're going, and that's what excites me about, about serving God. Like, why, why, do I, why do I continue this? I'm, I'm going 25 years serving the Lord. Uh, why does it excite me serving God? It excites me because it reminds me that why I serve him is not because of where I've been or even where I'm at, but it's where I'm going. It's where God's taking your family, your legacy, your life, your children, your marriage, where God is taking us as a church. It's not about, let's just, you know, uh, you know think about where we, where, and don't get me wrong, we thank God for our history, we thank God what God's done in the past, but the truth is we're not in the past we're fighting for where we're going come on somebody that that's what the fight is for so so that's what this is about and and I want to just deposit that into you because God is so committed to who you're becoming that he will even disrupt your comfort oh lord I'll say it like this. God is even more committed to who you're becoming than you are. And that's why this this verse spoke to me last week, and then I rolled my ankle. Praise God. Good one. Oh, Lord, help me. I had to go to physical therapy, and my son's like, oh, yeah, they're going to get you. I'm like, where's the sympathy? Where's, like, Dad, how you doing? You know? He's like, it's your turn. I'm like, hold the phone here. What's going on around here, man? You know? But... That's why I love this verse, because the Bible says, watch verse 22, the Bible says, Jesus made them get in the boat. Go to verse 22, put on the table. It says, immediately, watch, read it together with me. It says, immediately, Jesus, what did he do? He made the disciples get into the boat. He made them. He didn't ask them. He made them get into the boat. It's like the parents, when you tell your kids, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Right? Clean your room. And they want to debate. Well, what? no, no, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, take a shower. Come on. Can I get a good church? Amen. Right? I'm not asking. They, they want to debate. Like, well, can't. No, 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 it's not a debate. I'm telling you. Okay, this was Jesus telling his disciples, I'm telling you, get in the boat. Made them. You better get in the boat, Rambo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> get in the boat. Don't even look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? So the way I read it was he had to make them, okay? They don't want to get in the boat. Why did they not want to get in the boat? Because in context, Jesus had been doing miracles, and the disciples were gaining popularity. And the disciples were like, we got it good right here. We're going to get in free Chick-fil-A. I mean, we go to the everywhere. Everybody knows us. They were getting real comfortable where they're at. Uh-huh. But God was more committed to who they were becoming. Why did God make them get into the boat? Because Peter had an appointment with the water. Oh, Lord. I come to tell somebody you got an appointment with the water. You didn't hear what I said. You have an appointment with the water. 
You have an appointment, and God can show you the miracle in a comfortable place. He got to get you in the water. He got to make you get in the storm. He got to make you so you can see the impossible. But you got to get in the boat. You got to get in the boat. Tell your neighbor, get in the boat. Tell your second choice, you too, get in the boat. Get in the boat. Because God cannot show you the miracle of water walking if you're not in the boat. Get in the boat. Get in the Bible college. Get, 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 get in the boat. Get into this vision God's doing. Get on the boat. Uh, no, I'm kind of comfortable. I'm kind of good. Get in the boat. Get into serving. Get in the boat. Get, get into grow track. Get in the boat. Get, get to the altar. Get in the boat. Get, 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 get in your word. Get, God's like, get on the boat, man. I'm trying, trying, trying to make you into something. Get on the boat. Don't make me. I will drag you. And some of y'all still running. And, God, and you're like, you're, I'm not going to get in the boat. I'm done. I'm... Oh, here we go. Get in the boat. Come on. Shout, get in the boat. Shout, get in the boat. Tell three people, he's talking to you. Get in the boat. Say, he's talking to you. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. And I call, I call it the Christian frustration because some of y'all know God's been telling you to get in the boat. He's been telling you, get, get on this boat. Yeah, quit playing. Get on the boat. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Get in this boat. Get on. And you're like, no. <laughs> and let's be honest, it's exhausting. It's exhausting not surrendering to God. I call it a frustrated faith. When you know what God's telling you to do, but you won't do it. <laughs> and the boat's right there. He's like, and you're like, but God. God's like, get in this boat right now because you have an appointment with the water. Get in this boat. Four years ago, 2019, the year before COVID hit, um, I'm not going to, I mean, you know, the church was going, kids, things were great, right? All was going on, and none of us knew, of course, COVID was going to hit. I mean, God had given us a word, the year of alignment, and, and um, but 2019, in a, an intense prayer time, October is a real intense prayer mo month for me. That's when I start, September, October, I start preparing for the new year. And I get my mind kind of, okay, God, what are you doing? And so October is kind of my, my intense prayer and fasting intercession month. And, um, and so in 2019 of October, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Josiah, would you risk it all again? And I was like, well, like, like how much? Because <laughs> I was praying, you know, Lord. And he said, would you risk it all again? And I'm like, well... Because if you're going to become what I'm calling you to become, you're going to have to risk it all again. And I said, okay. <laughs> Be careful what you say. I said, yes, Lord, we'll do it. I said, Father, yes, amen. COVID would hit, this and that, and then we would actually release, many of you know, in 2020, we said, God's calling us to expand again, and, uh, and then COVID hit, we had to put a pause on it. Little did I know that COVID will actually cause, right, what's going on with everybody going online, so then retailers would let go of big box uh, uh, stores, so now the Walmart came, so and, uh, God was all in control. He was setting this up. Tell you, neighbor, you're set up. You're, you're getting set up, right? You're getting set up. So now we're in a season of doing this. So how do you know? If you're supposed to walk on water and get in the boat, point number one, write this down. I got to move quick here. Number one, you got to ask God before stepping out. You have to ask God. So I know I threw a lot of things out there. Get in the boat, right? You got to ask God. Start tithing. Get in the boat. God can't show you a miracle if you ain't tithing. Say, get in the boat. See, I got no amens right there. I said, get in the boat. God can't show you a miracle if he's speaking to you to give us a significant offering, but you won't get in the boat. God can't give you the walk on water. Get in the boat. Get into Bible college, get into grow track, get into church, get into salvation, surrender at the altar, get married. Stop, you've been living together three years, just get married. Oh, nobody liked that one, nobody liked that one. Come on, nobody, oh, I got, just get married. You already, I don't know, you got three kids, just get married, that's it. You're like, I don't know yet. Come on, somebody. Get in the boat. We can do it right now. There's a pastor right here, we got, let, 
Hit me up, Pastor Louis. Well, come on. Anyway, sign up at the lobby. Just joking. Come on. Amen. Shout, get in the boat. God is trying to get you in the boat. But you got to ask God, God, what do you want me to do? God will speak to you. So I love here that when it was time for Peter to walk on water, watch this, verse 29. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says. Watch what it says. He said, I'm sorry, verse 20. He said, Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you where? On the way. So he asked, Lord, if it's you. So he's praying, God, speak to me if this is you. Because you got to know if it's God. And, and let me just give you an answer if you know it's God or not. You know it's God is if he said, tell me to come to you. You know it's God if it's going to get you closer to God. God would never bless you to get you further from him. So let me, let me give you a filter how to make uh, a, uh, a godly decision, godly decision making. You just have to ask, is this going to get me closer to God or further from God? If it's going to get you further from God, that's not from God. I would never bless my daughter Faith with something that's going to get her away from me. I'm going to bless her with something that's going to bring her closer to me. So, so whenever something comes to you and you say, Lord, is this you? Ask yourself, is this going to get me further from God or closer to God? So if you get a DM from that ex you know you shouldn't be with, and you go, I was just thinking about him. Is this from God? Then you ask yourself, is this going to get me closer to God? That's, see how it's helping you? You get a text from a friend who says, this weekend, it's, it's on me. Here you are trying to kick that drug habit, but this weekend it's free. And you go, is if I go with, 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 on this weekend, is it going to get me closer to God? Away from my addiction or back to my addiction? Is, is this from God or not of God? Does that make sense? Okay. It's just... It's, Business partnerships, right? You're going to take on a job. And is this, God, is this going to use my gifts or is this going to ask me to do something that I know I don't want to do? So you just, it's, it's so, Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. He says, it's me, come. And then I like this next, uh, next year. The Bible says, verse 29, Peter said, then he got, watch this now, go to verse 29. It says, come, then he said, then Peter, what does the Bible says? Then Peter, what? Peter, Peter, what? Peter did what? I like this because sometimes you got to throw down. He's got to get down, right? He got down out of the boat, and he walked towards the water. Point number two, write this down. If you're going to step into what you're called to do, at some point, you have to operate in faith and take your next step. Someone say operate in faith. At some point, it's going to take faith. At some point, you got to take that step onto the water. Like at some point, because it's great to sing it. Lord, I give you my life. And he's going to say, or you say, I surrender it all. God says, okay, time to surrender. Well, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Wait. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Because he's like, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. He's like, he's like I ain't fine. Come. Wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, so like for real, you want me to go? You want me to do this? Like right now? Like right now, right now, or, or like later? You know what I mean? At some point, if you're going to step into what God called you to do, you, got, you have to take that step of faith. You've got to be able to say, I'm going to step out on, and walk on this water. That's what we did as a church. That's what I feel we're doing right now, and I hope it speaks to you individually, is we stepped out and walked on water. We said, you know what? We're going to do this. It's going to be crazy. We're just going to step out, and Lord, let's see what happens. And this crazy thing happens. Peter got down, and guess what happened? He's on the water. Bang on the water. And when he's on the water, he's doing the impossible. Why? Because when you obey God, you will do the impossible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you're walking on water. He's on the water. He obeys him. And the miracle of walking on water, listen to me, the miracle of walking on water is that when he was on the water, listen to me now, we think that the water was calm like this stage, like glass, just calm waters. No, there was a storm. That means the waves are like this. So when he was walking on water, he was like, whoa, whoa. Because when you obey God, you're not going to just walk on calm waters. You will walk on the crazy waters. Come on, somebody, and do the impossible. People say, how are you doing that? Because I'm obeying God. I'm obeying God in the middle of the storm. 
And he's under that anointing. He is under that calling. He is under, why? Because he's obeying God and he's walking on water. In the middle of all hell breaking loose, the storm, the water in his face, the waves smacking him. What is going on? I don't know, but I'm just walking on water. I don't know. We're just doing the impossible. I don't know, but we're just doing what God called us to do. I don't know. We're just stepping out because I'd rather be walking in faith than trying to play it safe and not see what God can do. Shout amen. Tell somebody, walk on water. And it's the impossible thing. Now, this is a metaphor. So, I mean, you can go try at your pool at home, try to walk on water, see if it works. Okay. But this is a metaphor. Peter got down and walked on water. Now, why did he walk on water? Because when you obey God's word, you're under his anointing, the supernatural empowerment of God. Okay, don't miss this point. I got to go quick here, okay? The Bible says that Jesus is the anointed one, Jesus Christ. The word Christ is not his last name, okay? Jesus Christ, get it? Christ, Christ not his last name. Christ is what's on, the word Christ is Christos, means the anointed one. The church is called the body of, we are the anointed body of Christ. Christ, the anointing, never leaves. So the, the supernatural empowerment of God is on his church. So the anointing is on you. When we obey God's word, there is a supernatural empowerment on our lives to do the impossible. So watch this. The anointing is oil. Whenever you put oil on water, what happens to the oil? Separates and the oil sits on top of the water. When you're under the oil and anointing of God, you're going to get it, you're going to get it, you're going to get it. You can't sink because oil sits on top of water and you're able to walk on the impossible. Come on, give God a shout if you believe it. Say amen. He walks on that water. Why? Because we're in a season we need to operate by faith. And faith is not because everything is okay. Faith is all oh, hell is breaking loose, but I'm still walking on this thing. I'm still walking towards this thing. I ain't going to sink back. I ain't going to fall back. I ain't going to give up. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to just be in depression. And I want to clap for you because you came to church today. You could have stayed home. You could have gave up. You could have went back to your ex. You could have went back to the drug house. You could have went back to your old habits. But you said, I'm going to God's house. I'm going to worship. I'm going to serve him. And God God, why? Because I want the anointing of God on my life. People, I'm so glad you're here. Town, say, I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here. Faith will hold you up. But it's the faith of what it looks like, watch this now, on the crazy waters. This morning, I'm just doing my, my little walk on water. We're like, I'm going to go out there. Well, pastor, what about wisdom? I thank God for wisdom, but sometimes you got to operate in faith. You didn't hear what I said. You got to operate in faith. And I know it. Don't get me wrong. Okay, it'll be okay. Don't worry. I'll ice it later. Pray for you. Pray for me this week. But I just felt I had to be here today. I had to tell somebody who was being attacked, somebody who's going through, going through hell, somebody that, that everything around you is trying to tell you, you shouldn't go anymore because look how much the devil is attacking you. Look what you're going through. And they got like, the devil. Look at, look at, look at what's happening to you. And I say, yeah, isn't it miraculous? <laughs> Some of you shouldn't even be here this morning, but isn't it miraculous? Oh, I don't know who I'm encouraging today. Some of you should have gave up a long time ago, but isn't it miraculous? Isn't it? Why? Because you're stepping into what you were made for. God is committed to who I'm becoming, and I'm committed to who I'm becoming. And so no matter what hell or high water may be thrown at me, my kids, my house, my family, my body, my ankle, my neck, or my back, I got to keep going forward. I got to keep going. I got to keep going forward. I got to live out what God called me to do. I can't go backwards. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell somebody you need faith. Say you need faith. Because you got an appointment with the water. You got an appointment with the water. Point number three, write this down. I got to wrap this up. Oh, Lord, help me. Fear will sink you. Verse 30. The Bible says, verse 30, 
But when he saw the wind, he was what? What was he called? He was what? He was what? And he began to what? Why did he sink? Because the waves are crazy. Why did he sink? Because, the, because, because see, what had happened was his tia. Why did he sink? Because his ex. Why did he sink? Because the devil. Why did he sink? Because fear got in him. It's not the water around the boat that sinks the boat. It's only the water that gets in the boat. What'll sink you in this season, what'll sink me in this season is the moment I let fear get in here. I can't let fear get in here. Because if fear gets in here, then I start sinking. I can't. As soon as fear got in. I'm telling you, your battle is not the devil. Your battle is the fear. You got to pin your shoulders back. I'm praying a holy confidence come on you. You get a confidence. Confidence. No fear. No, tell somebody to say, no fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. And I already told you what the Holy Spirit told me because when first attacks, things started happening, I remember what I started saying, I was like, I said, man, the devil's mad. That's what I said to the Lord. The devil's mad, Lord. And the Lord was like... Not literally, but that's how I felt. The Lord said, stop saying the devil's mad. No, the devil's afraid. <laughs> he's afraid. That's why he's fighting. Don't let fear get in you. Let me give the definition of faith. Put the definition of faith. Okay, because faith, definition of faith is this. Believing what you can't see will happen. What's the definition of faith? Okay, I'm going to give you, don't put it up yet. Get ready. Here's the definition of fear. Get ready, okay? Pay close attention. Here's the definition of fear. Go. Read it. One, two, and three. They, they missed it. Put the definition of faith back up there. They missed it. Definition of faith. Let's read it. One, two, and three. Believing what you can't see. Okay, now definition of fear. Pay close attention. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Believing. <laughs> fear is just faith backwards <laughs> all you have to do is correct your faith your faith fear is believing what you can't what's gonna, what's gonna happen oh, Dios mio. <laughs> but faith is saying no 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 you don't know god god the devil's gonna have to pay back seven times oh, i'm gonna prophesy the devil's gonna have to pay you back seven times seven times restoration is gonna come to your home Full restoration is going to come to your home. Your kids will be saved. Your marriage will be healed. Your body will be restored. Your business will come back. Your life will come back. Your mind is going to come back. Your hope. Why? Because we got faith to walk on water. Shout hallelujah. Shout amen. Oh, God, we love you. Number four, write this down. I got to go quick here. Number four, I'm almost done. How do you step into it? You got to stay focused on who called you. Don't get, don't get caught up in everything else. Jesus said, come, I'm going to go where Jesus called me to go. God told us to tackle this Goliath and turn a former Walmart into the house of God. We going after this thing with everything we got, everything we got in Jesus' name. Paul said, you're crazy, pastor. You're crazy. They called me crazy when there was seven chairs in my living room, and they said, you're crazy. And I said, this church will touch the world. They call this crazy. Come on, Art. They call this crazy. We're a little, we were in a little warehouse and then we went to the 510. Not loco. We're still crazy. They call this crazy. We went to the Regal Theater and they say, you guys are crazy. They call this crazy going in here. They call this crazy going to Irvine. They call this crazy starting an Espanol service. They're calling us crazy. Well, guess what? God called us not to walk on cold waters, but on crazy waters. And crazy waters. Shout amen. Tell two people crazy waters. Not calm waters. Oh Lord. Lord, if you want to heal my ankle, go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be surprised. I might start doing the Holy Ghost shuffle. You never know. Come on now. That's right. Fear will sink you, but stay focused. Tell your neighbor, stay focused. I posted on my social media yesterday because I just, just encouraged me as peace is not a feeling, it's a focus. 
Faith is not a feeling, it's a focus. Strength is not a feeling, it's a focus. In this season, I'm learning to stay focused on who called me. Not, not on everybody else. No, no, no. That's why don't listen to the naysayers or the haters. They didn't call you. God called you. Amen. God called you. And if he called you, he's going he's to see you through. Number five, and I'm done. You have to turn little faith into lasting faith. Remember when Jesus said this in verse 31? He says, immediately, remember, Peter started to sink. And when he started to sink, Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him and he told him this. He says, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Now, again, jokingly here, but if little faith is walking on water, I'm going to get saved again after this service, just so you know. Because <laughs> that, wow, I'm telling you, it takes a lot of faith, right? But that word little in the Greek, actually what it means is not talking about little in size, it's little in duration. So when, oh, this, don't miss this wrist heavy revy here. When Jesus told Peter, ye of little faith, he said, Peter, your problem is your faith only lasts small durations. It only lasts a little bit of time. You believe me so strong, but it only lasts a little bit. Oh, that's a word, y'all. He's like, Peter, I need you to believe in me the whole way through. Lasting faith. The problem is you believe in me, Peter, only for an hour and 15 minutes on Sunday. But then you start sinking as soon as you walk. Oh, help us, Lord. He says, Peter, I need you to get some lasting faith. I don't need you to be a popcorn Christian. I don't want you to be a shining star and fall right back now. I need you to get some lasting faith. I need you to get some fight back faith. I need you to get some faith that says I believe in you when I'm in church. I believe in you when all hell breaks loose. I believe in you when my ankle gets tore up. I believe in you. Oh, God help me. I got some lasting faith. So I'm going to walk this thing out. I'm going to walk this thing out. I'm going to walk this thing out until I finish it. Why? Because I'm stepping into what I was made for. I'm coming into what God has called me to be. Tell somebody you need lasting faith. So he wasn't talking about, you only have a bit, little bit of faith. We've got to bring endurance to this thing to make the journey. Come on, somebody. Final scripture. Let's all stand to our feet. Final scripture. In Jesus' name, by next Sunday, I will be doing the Holy Ghost Shuffle. Come on, pray, 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 pray. In Jesus' name. Ain't nobody got time for rolled ankles. Too busy. Too busy for rolled ankles. The Bible says, watch this. This is my secret stash right here. Hebrews 13, 3 Hebrews 10, 30, 20, 36. This is what be carrying me, and I just want to give this to you. The Bible says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, what does the Bible says? You will what? You will receive. When are you going to receive what he promised? When you persevere, what? The will, after the will of God. So it's not just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just holding on. But no, how are you holding on? Are you holding on doing the will of God, or are you holding on just getting high? Good preaching, Pastor. Amen. How are you holding on? Are you holding on doing God's will or are you holding on playing around? He says, when you've persevered doing the will of God, you're going to receive what he promised. Now, I'm going to tell you what I love about this verse because it's for real people. Okay, I love, I, I'm real. People say, I'm always thriving, never surviving. Well, God bless you. Right now, I'm like surviving. I'm just telling you the truth. Like, I literally came to church on crutches, okay? I told the guys, if I got, you got to carry me, who's going to carry the boats? Who's going to carry, who's going to carry the pastor? Come on, somebody, okay? Like, I'm like, I'm, I'll come out here. Like, what do we got to do, all right? So I'm like, we're going to persevere. Some, some moments, you're sur barely surviving. Some moments, you're going to be like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm barely surviving, but don't you give up. 
Don't you turn back. Don't you go. We're going to persevere. We're going to see what God promised to what he does. Hey, thanks so much for watching our service at Freedom House OC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always my honor, my wife's honor to bring you God's word. And I know that God's best is in your future. Make sure to share, uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.